There's a great explosion of noise. Craig Croke Park is a beguiling setting. And for the fifth time this year, Claire meet Cork in competitive action. But well, this is the one that matters most of all. It's the second all Munster All Ireland final. The first for 16 years, and Brian Gavin from Opry gets the match underway. And it's Cork who will play from left to right in the first half. Stalemate situation in the middle of the park here. They wait for it to come out to them. Eventually comes out as far as Brendan Bugler. And Brendan Bugler tries to set Clare on their way with the opening attack. That's uh, Shane O'Neill getting it away towards his captain, Park Roman. Broken up here towards Colm Galvin. Back into the corner again, the shoulder there on Podge Collins. Waiting for it is Dara Conan to come up. Big tall figure, six foot six, challenging Shane O'Neill there, causing early problems. Conor O'Sullivan coming across. Nervous opening to this match by both sets of players. William Egan eventually picking it up. The little hand pass back as far as Anthony Nash, and finally the clearance by the goalkeeper from Cantor. Onto the 45 meter line of Clare's defence. Again, problems just getting that ball under control for Kean Dillon. He claims it. Linesman on the near side, who was going around for Tipperary, says that's going to be a, a clear line ball. This to be taken here by Pat Donlan. And just looking at how they have set up, and it looks like Christopher Joyce is the one who's back as a sweeper or extra defender for Cork at this stage. Clare with four attackers inside the 65 metre line, but that's taken up here by Jamie Collin. Collin looking to try and make some headway, running into several Clare players. Back there is Colin Ryan. The hand pass across here as far as Conor Ryan, his namesake. And straight to the loose man, who is Christopher Joyce. And Chris Joyce gets it away up into the corner here, looking for Conor Lee Han, but it's won instead by Donald O'Donovan. And O'Donovan gets away there, those bright white boots. Very visible down as far as Dara Conan. Steadies himself, but it's dropped well. Cross came Shane O'Neill, needs a replacement stick. What an edgy opening couple of minutes here, Michael. Yeah, a little bit nervous. Great play there by Donald O'Donovan out in front of Conor Lehan. He's gone into the corner, Jamie Collin out in the wing. And see, Brian Murphy has picked up Tony Kelly. There's a quick line ball now into Dara Conan. And Dara Conan has this opening shot, looking at the first point, and he's got it. Just over two minutes and 20 seconds are gone, and that's a good start for Dara Conan and for Clare. Right out there, near the sidelines, settled his feet. There was nobody in to challenge him, however. Good, clever piece of thinking by Clare. Yeah, great scoring. They've been doing that all year, that quick line ball, and I'm surprised Cork weren't ready for it. Pressure on the Clare defence here. How will they cope? Picked up here well by Conor Ryan. And the referee has spotted foul inside there, and it's going to be a free. Pudge Collins with a, a puzzled look on his face as the referee was blowing his whistle that time, but it's going to be a free in for Clare, a chance for them to tag on a second point. And this will bring uh, Colin Ryan onto the 45 metre line or thereabouts for his first shot in this All Ireland final, and a chance to get an early point for him. Very centrally positioned, well within his range, and a chance for Clare to go two points to nil in front. 51 points he scored so far, chance to make it 52, should do so, and he does. Well, that is a very, very good start by the Bannermen. That'll settle them down very, very nicely indeed. Absolutely, they're interesting, you know, uh, Keane Dillon has picked up Pat Horgan, he's been the sort of man-marker all year, he picked up Joe Canning and he, he's, uh, he's in on him. And Claire, uh, Claire gone orthodox, I'm not surprised by this, this is what I was predicting during the week, they've abandoned the sweeper system and they've gone man-to-man. Might just work for them, it might uh, confuse Cork about it, but expecting something else. Here's Seamus Harnady, clipping it across in here towards Luca Farrell, lets it run on, look at the number of defenders who gather immediately, and Donald O'Donovan gets it away over the far sideline. It'll be a line ball to Cork, the pressure will remain on that clear defence. And who wants to take it is Daniel Carney, that was uh, Donald O'Donovan from Clonlara, the 25-year-old. Take it short by Cork in here towards Conor Lee Hahn. Leaves it behind him. O'Donovan's after it again. He's made a good start. Second time to get on the ball. Hand passing it down towards Podge Collins. Challenged there immediately by Conor O'Sullivan. And this time the uh, linesman far side, who is James McGrath, signals that it's going to be a Cork possession. William Egan 
looks like the man who's going to take it Egan from Kilbrin in North Cork which is the birthplace by the way of Archbishop Thomas Croke in whose honour Croke Park of course is named and you're just looking at Clare the only man inside 50 yards is Derek Honan inside on one on one if they can get a ball inside all the forwards have withdrawn way out the field and they've left huge space inside in front of the goal and they'll be hoping to crowd that midfield and negate Cork's creative ability and exploit the space at the other end as David McInerney drives it but drives it inaccurately well it's a very interesting tactical match you can see that already the way Clare have set up and Jimmy Barry Murphy and his mentors having to react everybody had said going into this that uh, they should perhaps stick with the tried and trusted but uh, you never knew with Davy Fitzgerald he was always capable of producing yeah, something special see as Conor Ryan gone to centre back Pat Donnellan playing in the middle of the field he's picked up Larkin McLaughlin uh, Larkin McLaughlin scored three points in the first half against Dublin there's Seamus Harnady now with a chance Harnady swinging it off his left and that one's got over the bar and it's the opening point for Cork in this match it's taken them nearly six minutes but Seamus Harnady, who's distinguished himself right from the very beginning of this year, with display after display, wonderful uh, hurling. Two points to one. Yeah, great first touch there, and a very important score. You know, settled Cork in. They were very hesitant since the start of the game, but that's a great score. Joyce goes up, leaves it behind, however. Picked up here by Brian Murphy. Oh, it's a wayward pass straight to the other number five, who is Brendan Bogler, which stands the challenge. Back here as far as John Conlon. Conlon, 65 metres out from his target. It's a lovely looking shot and it's got over the bar. What a boost that is for John Conlon. Well, he usually is a consistent, threatening force for Clare, hampered by injury this year, but here he's made it three points to one. Yeah, that's a great score. John Conlon uh, stretched it off down against uh, Cork in the Munster semi final, and it was a big loss that they were concussion, but a brilliant score. Three shots, three points by Clare. And that time, a bit of a wild swing. The referee has uh, penalised Conor Ryan, and it's going to be a free in for Cork. Chance for them to eat into that uh, lead that Clare have established. And the first shot at the target for Pat Horgan, the Glen Rovers player. One goal and 30 points so far this year. 20 of those, 20 points coming from freeze. This from 50 metres out. Very, very light breeze behind him, but it's mostly a still afternoon. He's driven it straight over. Very good start made. Little to choose between the teams. Yeah, that just was the foul. He had the left hand there, you can see in around the head and just caught him by the helmet. Definite free in. Connor Ryan, the guilty party. Can't afford to give away freeze like that with the likes of Pat Horgan around. That sails through the middle here. Going back, trying to take it. Drive Murphy, but under pressure now and the pressure being exerted by Tony Kelly ever the danger tricky angle for him wonderful score beautiful point by Tony Kelly well he got the angles absolutely right there because this wasn't easy by any man who remains stumbling pursued vigorously but he still managed to get that shot in great score 4-2 yeah, and he's brilliant at that, Jerry. You know, see the way him shortened the grip. And, you know, if his first touch was a little better, he might have been through on goal there. He just fumbled it at the start, but a great point afterwards. This sailed straight through the centre. Pat O'Connor in the white helmet, number seven, trying to get to it, waiting for it as well is Colm Galvin. Picked up in the end here, however, by Carney. Hand pass outside to Joyce. Christopher Joyce to the piercing player, trying to get away, being followed by Colin Ryan there. Hard work being done by... Both sets of players, and back is Conor McGrath, the corner forward, notionally. One attacking force, really, as Colin Galvin hits it in. That one force is Darrell Conan, and Holman against Shane O'Neill. They've isolated him in there, and O'Neill does well here, but there is some holding. Yeah, but sure, this is very dangerous from a car point of view. We look one on one in here. Shane O'Neill's hurl just been held there by Darrell Conan for a second, but you know that. Corker leaving nobody back in support there, and if Honan gets one ball there into his hand, it's going to be in the back of the net. Well, the loose player they have there at the moment is Conor O'Sullivan. It's just changed even since the uh, beginning of this match just nine minutes ago. From this free, up there towards Park Ronan. They follow it in. Luke O'Farrell trying to get to it, and he goes down under the trip that time. The referee has blown his whistle. And uh, Brian Gavin noting the offence. Luke O'Farrell, one of the real dangers for that Clare defence. Pat Donlan speaking with the referee here. It's got to be another free in. Horgan will take it. 
so this should be four points to three and little to choose between these teams in the opening ten minutes yeah I think Cork will be happy enough Johnny. they haven't done a lot of hurling they're only going to be a point down now after this and uh, you know it's to the nerves obviously early on here now the game really hasn't uh, t taken light yet well he hit it with uh, plenty of height but loads of accuracy as well and a second point at three by the 25 year old and now it's four points to three Clare still the leaders just over ten minutes gone in this year's All-Ireland Hurling Final. That was the trip that led to the free being awarded. Pat Kelly, wonderful young goalkeeper for Clare, looking for John Conlon, he's often the target of the puck outs. Bugler is there just in case it's broken down to him. Conlon got that point earlier on, inside towards McGrath, runs on, Joyce misses it. Needs a little bit of assistance there, Shane O'Neill trying to get it away, some fumbling, eventually it's Joyce who picks it up here. He's grown into the role here of centre-half back this year quite considerably. Brian Murphy now slipping the little hand pass back. Shane O'Neill once again, 31st Championship match today. Big, huge one up there. Inside to the inside forward line towards Horgan. Horgan and Harnady going after it. Clare standing firm, but again the referee has blown his whistle and spotted a, a loose hurl that time. A little bit of indiscipline. Penalised by referee Brian Gavin and the man who's the guilty party this time is Pat O'Connor. And yeah. another free in and another chance to tie up the game. Yeah, and you'd have to say, you know, all frees, little, little tip, but there's soft frees to be given away in the Ireland final, and that's three handy frees now that Pat Horgan has got in, in the last few minutes. I doubt the manager will be very happy with the uh, level of discipline shown so far. So Pat Horgan to hit this one, low trajectory this time, but the usual result, three points out of three attempted uh, shots from frees, and the team's tied up at four points apiece. Well, it's interesting that in the uh, last match, which was the uh, semi-final of the Munster Championship, his team only got two frees against Cork. Colin Ryan took one of them, and the other was a 65. In comparison, uh, Cork got seven of their scores from place balls. This time it's Colin Ryan trying to advance. This time he's fouled as he was doing so. And he'll fancy taking this free himself, I'm sure. Just caught here. That time Cork's discipline letting them down. Chris Joyce making his way back. He's only 21 years of age. Still very much learning the ropes. So Colin Ryan from Newmarket on Fergus, the county champions in Clare last year. Very, very reliable free taker normally. This to put Clare back in front again. And this time he's absolutely precise. Second point to three. That wasn't easy. That was a fair old distance out. It's all very well doing it in the Clare Championship or in other grounds, but here on All Ireland Final Day itself, the pressure is immense. Yeah, they're not easy. Any of them, and you know, both both free takers, you know, have huge bearing today. But they're at 90%. I think both of them all year, and they're not going to miss too many. Nash's puck out here drops into the hand of Pat O'Connor. Down towards Padge Collins, yet to do that kind of roaming role that we anticipate from him. And a couple of times the ball has been aimed down in his corner and it's uh, been misjudged and gone out of play. And he hasn't been able to do anything creative so far, but he is a very, very fine young player. Yeah, and it's clear, I think, that, that Clare are targeting Todd Collins' wing. You know, that David McInerney had a long clearance and went out over the line again, Pat O'Connor. He's in at centre-back now, Pat O'Connor, with Conor Ryan out in the wing. And this man is playing everywhere for Clare this year, you know, and he's, he's, it's obviously a man-marking situation that they're going with today with uh, Conor Ryan picking up James Harnley. Conor O'Sullivan cutting it up here. And one back again by Clare, and it's the strong man, Conor Ryan, and Ralph back in last year's under-21 winning team. Down as far as Dara Conan, who won a under-21 medal here in 2009. Spooning it through here towards his fellow attacker, Conor McGrath, but that was targeted a little bit slowly, and Stephen McDonald was able to get back. A lot of hand passes go back to Anthony Nash, the goalkeeper, and I'm sure Clare will be aware of that. The other backs have great faith in him and use him repeatedly. That's well taken again by Conor Ryan. He started really promisingly. Colin Ryan now hitting one from a huge distance. It's going to drop short. That was uh, highly ambitious. The other forwards often thank him for it. This time the challenge is on Pat Donlan. There's a Clare player in the square, uh, injured. Meanwhile, Brendan Bugler advances, has a go, but puts it away to the right. And the player is down is Dara Conan. Yeah, I was following the clearance of the ball there from Anthony Nash. I didn't see 
uh, what happened. The umpires are right beside it there, so they would have got a good view of it. They should have a very, very good view. We might even have a camera shot of it. Let's see. Oh, that's uh, Conor O'Sullivan. I, that's is it? No, it's Shane O'Neill, and he yeah. could be in trouble. Well, he's uh, marking Derek Holnan. And now it's a question of uh, what the umpires have told the match official. And a very, very concerned looking Jimmy Barry Murphy there with Dr. Con Murphy. Well, we've seen it all year. You know, we've had a few sending offs that people haven't been happy with, but it was a swipe of the hurl down the head. And it's a big call now for Brian Gavin. It sure is. So Davy Fitzgerald wondering whether or not he'll be playing against the team with 14 or 15 at this early in the game. Just over a quarter of an hour gone. Dr. Forley Quinn out there with the physio, Diamond Horgan, looking after Derek Honan. There was a certain amount of jostling going on before that. Where Forner went in as well there to just check on things. Shorsha open. And now the referee calling aside uh, both of these players. And clearly something happened before all of that. We got the end of it there where Shane O'Neill caught Derek Kona, but there must have been something going well, on Well, he's indicating a, a bit of a handle yeah. back, and he's given both of them a yellow card. And I have to say, you know, Shane O'Neill probably lucky there. Uh, we didn't see Derek Kona what he did, but he did, get, he did get a slap down top of the head. Probably not overly malicious, but still, we've seen lads been sent off from maybe less this year. Certainly have. Well, they've both been worn now at this stage. So on somewhat thin ice as that puck out comes down towards Park Crowden and here comes Daniel Carney, Carney from 30 metres out, great save! Followed up in there, Luca Farrell can't get it in and was it picked up off the ground, the referee I think indicates that it was and Anthony Nash coming up the field and it's going to be an opportunity for Cork Anthony Nash coming up here, he's already scored in Championship hurling against Wexford last year in the qualifiers. So there will be uh, three on the line if the referee is awarding a penalty here. Now, is it going to be in was it inside or outside? It looks like it's a conventional 20 meter free. So there will be five on the line and Anti Nash to try his luck. And yeah. he's not coming up there just to put it over the bar. There'll be more than five. Well, he was called up very quickly, but it's only a technical foul, so it's a 21-yard free. But he's definitely, with his power, he's going to go for it. Nash with five points already in this year's championship. Rising, striking off the goalkeeper. I think it went up too high in the air for the goalkeeper, Anthony Nash, to get the connection he wanted. But tremendous save by Park Kelly. Fired his body at that. And now the goalkeeper for Cork is out of position. And here comes Pudge Collins. And Pudge Collins drops this one over the bar. A point for Clare, where Cork were going for a goal at the other end. Well, Jared, that's a huge swing. Anthony Nash threw the ball nearly into the 14-yard line. A brilliant save by Patrick Kelly. He was goading, goading uh, Anthony Nash to go for the goal. And he, he went out, threw himself in front of it. Great save as well here from Kelly. Ball bouncing away from him. That's a fantastic save in the first place before the pick-up. That's a huge turning point, I think, you know, early in the game. Great save and a great score by Todd Collins down the around. From the puck out. Clare once again on their own half-back line. Pat Donnellan here. Getting it inside here as far as Colin Ryan. Low inside towards Conor McGrath this time. Getting away there from Stephen McDonald from 45 metres out. McGrath shoots and McGrath puts it wide. And it's just the second wide for Clare so far. Well, what a dramatic couple of minutes here. We could have had a goal for Cork. Instead, a wonderful save by Pa Kelly. Courageously dived into this one here. Just flung himself at it. Hit his rear. <laughs> he didn't know much about it, to be fair. But see where he was. He was nearly out on top of the ball. And, you know, very brave. And a great save. That comes off Pa Cronin. Being marked by Brendan Bugler. Got the stick in there. Out helped. Out next is Donald O'Donovan. And O'Donovan from the middle of the park. Shooting it off his left-hand side. Drops into the goalkeeper's hand, however, and Anthony Nash now can begin the counter-offensive. Two between them. 19 minutes got in this All-Ireland final. Back it comes to Colin Ryan. Looking for a support player. Doesn't get one, however. Tony Kelly back helping out. Kelly operating between the half-forward line and midfield. Low inside towards John Conlon. Brushed aside there. Bodies falling to the ground. 
and there's an injury to one of the uh, Clare players as we watch this again here. Podge Collins going down. And the player who was uh, making contact with him, Daniel Carney there. There's an injury to Colin Ryan. Colin Ryan has got two pointed frees already in this match. 25 year old school teacher is 25 last Monday. And the medical officers have been busy for Clare so far. And just in case, they are preparing Peter Duggan. Louis Mulqueen there. One of the officials for Clare who's done so much good work over the years. Just having a word with him should he be required. A great passage for Clare, I think, in the last five minutes. They've taken over their half back line in particular. Uh, Conor Ryan, as I said, left half back. He's caught a couple of great balls. Pat Donlin, who's kind of switching between midfield and half back line. Brendan Bugler dominating there. And really, Pat Crone and Seamus Harrity, Conor Lahan, none of these players have we seen yet in the game. So, you know, Clare got three points up after this and they're well worth their lead, I think. So it's going to be Colin Ryan to try and get a third point in this match, having recovered from injury against centrally positioned and 50 metres a little more from the target and he's certainly in form and unsung and feeling confident today you can sense that three-pointed freeze looks nerveless seven points to four 21 minutes gone so far so good for uh, Claire here Cork needing a lift it's uh, ten minutes since Cork have scored that was a big catch there, one well in the air by Conor Ryan once again. Well, the match he's playing all the way down as far as Podge Collins. Darts this way and that, gets away from Conor O'Sullivan. Beautiful ball inside, precisely in as far as Conor McGrath. Switching his legs this way and that, and then over the bar. That's a beautifully worked point. That's this new Clare hurling team at their very best. Precise about where they pass it, confident in their approach, going past the defenders, hitting the shots and getting another one, eight points to four. Well, that was a great score, Jerry. We've seen maybe a couple of aimless balls in there, a little bit of rush of blood, but that was very well worked. Conor Ryan is dominating in the half-back line. Great ball in, and Podge Collins, you know, fantastic ball into Conor McGrath, and a beautiful point. Connolly Hart didn't get to that, but he's uh, assisted this time. Coming up to help him there was William Egan. It's got to be Cork's free. Before this match, people were talking in terms of this being a, a battle of Clare's well-tutored tactical style against uh, Cork's more free-spirited approach. But Cork are looking for some of their forward pairs in particular now to really make a bigger impact. They've depended on Patrick Horgan's free-taking. He's got three so far, and he's keeping them very much in this contest. Eight points to five. The only point they've got from play so far Cork in the opening 22 nearly 23 minutes has come from Seamus Harnady yeah and five of the Clare forwards have scored from play a point each John Connell and Tony Kelly Parry Collins Derek Conan and Conor McGrath and uh, only Seamus Harnady has saved a point for Cork from play back once again comes John Conlon big huge one in towards Derek Holm and that spells danger oh great save Anthony Nash got down somehow managed to keep it out should have been the goal for Clare it's a free out instead. Reminiscent of what happened in Limerick in the Munster semi-final. Dara Coleman had goal chances there. He had about three. But this was a really good one. And he certainly is causing problems. Should have scored. Really good piece of goalkeeping. That was low down to the goalkeeper's left. But if you watch for the little flick here as well, Jared, just there, Dante Nash got it away from under his feet. Uh, fantastic save. And Dara Coleman did everything right. But with that, again, both goalies have to make a great save to this stage. This time it's Patrick Horgan and the shoulder from Horgan. He's still in play here, looking for a support player. There's nobody coming to his aid, and it's Clare who are grouping better. Conor O'Sullivan, hand passed as far as Joyce, and Chris Joyce drives it in there towards the team captain. But across comes the magnificent Pat O'Connor, and O'Connor off his left, back into the middle of the field towards Conor McGrath. McGrath tussling there with Chris Joyce, supported here by Colin Ryan. And Colin Ryan hoops superbly by Stephen McDonald. But it comes back still to Podge Collins. Podge Collins challenged highly there by Stephen McDonald. And a look of resignation in Stephen McDonald as he walks away from that and recognizes that uh, this Clare attack really are looking highly dangerous this afternoon. They are, but they're winning the battle in the air. You know, none of the Cork forwards are competing in the air. Pat O'Connor, fantastic catcher, and he's been brilliant this year to me, the most underrated member of this Clare team. 
brilliant ball and Todd Collins' movement. Look where he was out in the left wing again. And a great interplay between himself and Colin Ryan and Collins won the free. So just coming up to 25 minutes gone and Colin Ryan to keep his success rate going. Well, he's pointed from this distance already in this match, so he knows the angles. And he's got it right again. Absolutely perfect free taking by a really talented player. That's 28 points he's got against Cork now in uh, three and a half matches. And that was that wonderful catch by Pat O'Connor after that. That's a lovely piece of interception by Stephen McDonnell. Cork need to get going as an attacking force. Maybe Harnady from the St. Eta's club. He's got one, he goes for another one. Well taken in by the goalkeeper, Park Kelly. Not easy. Jamie Collins after him, trying to hook him, and he robs it. And Jamie Collins, then a, a shot which is blocked, but in comes David McInerney, and McInerney tries to get away from the challenges. And uh, the referee has blown his whistle. Yeah, that David McInerney certainly looked to be fouled there. They're coming across with the ball, he got a slap, and he was going to go down injured. He stayed going, took a few steps, and the Clare lad's not impressed with that decision. And the Clare fans very, very unhappy with it, that's for sure. And he's pointing out to the referee that uh, he was the one who was fouled earlier on. As you say, tried to keep going. Yeah, he took a heavy, he took a slap across, it looked a free out to me, he stayed going, and it looked to be another slap that came in maybe, but he had taken a few steps at that stage, and I think that's harsh and clear. Well, he didn't get the free, what he might have, and now Cork can benefit, and Horgan trying to add to his four points. Referee bringing the ball in for the protest by Clare into a more central position. Thought they might have even considered bringing Nasher for this one as well. But instead it's going to be Horgan. So the Glen Rovers man I'm sure will be considering a goal. A lot of bodies on the line. Drives it over the bar instead. Five-pointed freeze for Patrick Horgan. And it's nine points to six. But the Clare fans still furious about that. They are absolutely there's the uh, knock down onto the players onto the goalkeeper's stick then the ball stolen away and that was certainly a foul no question about that it was by Lee Han but free wasn't given Cork got a point out of all of that and now Clare respond here with Pat Dublin running into a cul-de-sac Not the really stylish final so far that we've been hoping it might be. A lot of time still left in it. Yeah, Cork just hanging in there, really. You know, clearly dominating the game, but there's only three points in it. Well, Make that four. More than that now, because Podge Collins has driven this one high. The umpires have a little chat about it and say, yes, that's a very, very good shot. Podge Collins, second point, and now it's ten points to six. Clear by four. And the quick line ball again, Jerry. You know, we've seen it all year, but brilliant. Collins again, way away from his right corner forward position, takes it up, thinking under, under feet all the time. Fast enough from Colin Ryan and over the bar, a great score. A rep more or less a replica of the Derek Conan point earlier on, also from a, a line ball quickly taken. Now Tony Kelly. And Tony Kelly is out over the near sideline. Wasn't on target anyway, so it's going to be a line ball to Cork. Cork just about hanging on in there still, but they're only four points behind. It was interesting in the Munster semi-final as well. I think there were only three points between the teams at half-time, and then Cork stormed into it in the second 35 minutes. So you can't dismiss any team's chances at this early stage. Joyce cutting it up. Held beautifully again here. It's David McInerney robbing Luke O'Farrell and then setting off the hand pass judiciously placed into the path here of Colin Galvin. Galvin, two men after him. A lot of trickery been shown, but maybe he should have laid the ball off to a support player. McGraw was available to him. He never got it. And instead it's Shane O'Neill, the fullback for Cork, up towards Connolly Hans Wing. Been marked closely there by Pat O'Connor. Back as far as Brendan Bogler. And Brendan Bogler eventually sandwiched by two Cork players. He's certainly fired up. They all are. Yeah, great play by Bogler. But really, Conor Lehan was out in front. You know, he should have won that possession. He didn't. And, you know, look, you see it there. Just too casual. And Pat O'Connor aimed at a flick and won the ball. 
and you'd have to say you know the Cork midfield and forward line they've hardly won any possession between them they relied on a couple of frees to keep them in the game and Clare are all, all over them at this stage well five frees so far and uh, just one point from play we keep on saying it Seamus Harnady's point earlier on Colin Ryan 65 metres out and the kind of form he's in today he looks like he's going to convert each and every opportunity that comes his way five out of five and 11 points to six for Claire and no more than they deserve she looks happy Anthony Nash's puck out looking for Par Cronin to try and win this he fumbles then goes and picks it up at the second attempt or tries to helped out here by Norcon McLaughlin who scarcely mentioned his name so far McLaughlin and Carney struggling in midfield constant pressure on the Cork half back line this is McLaughlin here up you know, against Colin Ryan yeah he studies Colin Ryan studies ground and McLaughlin went with the hand first you know it's any sort of a, a frontal charge like that you know to me Colin Ryan had no choice but to stand his ground there and that's a soft, soft free for Cork well otherwise uh, a free that might not have been given their way but it's been given to Pat Horgan and another one's gone over the bar Claire will argue about uh, the decision to give Cork their last two frees but Cork have availed of the opportunity and closed the gap to four points again without playing that terribly well four minutes to go to half time Pa Kelly's puck out down onto the half forward line Six from 11 for Clare, one from seven for Cork, scores from play so far. Conor McGrath, really dangerous forward, tricky operator, but this one has gone away to the left-hand side. Just their third wide of this first half. I think he's looking for maybe Hawkeye's intervention, but I don't think it's coming. Well, Brian Gavin is the one who will uh, call that, should it be required. Can be guided by the officials in the uh, Hawkeye office, as it were no call this time broken down again here Harnady flicking it across Daniel Carney now the Sars man fumbles Kean Dillon's there so too is Galvin Kean Dillon then comes across famous Harnady release the ball back once again and this time it's gone over the bar and another point from play for Cork and this one is scored by their midfielder Daniel Carney his uh, fourth point of this year's championship yeah, good play there by Seamus Harnady on the ground, lovely little hand pass and Daniel Carney over the bar and you know, expected to see much more of him in the game, that might settle him down now and as we kept saying, that Cork are going to be the happier team, they're only three points down now with Clare having dominated possession. And Jimmy Barry Murphy and Kieran Kingston, yeah, as you say, will be quietly pleased if they don't concede a goal between them here at half-time. Tony Kelly with this shot, lovely score, he's a terrific performer. One of the most eye-catching young players in this year's championship, the ex St. Flannan's man, picked it up, darts forward, and the usual dead-eye accuracy. Wonderful stuff. 12 points to eight. Yeah, great score, Ger. He's completely two-sided. I think that's why he's so difficult to mark. Very pacey, and that's one off his left and one off his right now. Just looks the complete hurler, doesn't he? That sails it over the head of the Conor Ryan that time. Chance to recover, however. Cork have it. Horgan looking for support players, Lorcan McLaughlin getting more into it now in the last couple of minutes that's good vision, picks out Brian Murphy and Brian Murphy knocks it over the bar, it's only his second ever championship point, playing in his ninth championship season the ultra efficient player playing in his 45th championship match today Brian Murphy, and he's been on the winning team for Cork 29 times hoping this will be the 30th, he's made it 12 points to 9 yeah, I know as a forward, in my own times, if you, if you brought it back up the field and he stuck one over the bar like that, you'd be a little bit embarrassed about it, but great ball by Nor Larkin McLaughlin and uh, Brian Murphy showing all his experience there. They're just plugging away, Cork. William Egan now, back here, Shane O'Neill has lost his stick. It's going to be a free out, and another little bit of needle there between a couple of players. Just another minute to go before the uh, half-time whistle will sound. Overall, Clare have looked the better team by far in the first half. But still, the margin's only three points. Anthony Nash hitting a huge run onto the 20-metre line. This time it's caught well by Park Cronin. Good save again by the goalkeeper, Park Kelly. Composed, getting it away out here. Pat Donnellan now. Off he goes once again. Luke O'Farrell's after him. Plays it in here as far as Galvin. 
Callum Galvin to carry it forward incrementally and that's gone away to the right hand side and it's a missed opportunity point they will probably feel they should have got a lot of hard work went into that yeah and I think Jared, maybe that's the style of play sometimes you know, Pat Donnellan had the ball loads of space he could have delivered an 80 90 yard ball into the full forward line and he didn't and you know it ends up going wide it can be a bit frustrating for the inside forward line two minutes of additional time now about to be started Anthony Nash huge puck out again towards Cronin but he's been double marked and every time that puck out comes down Clare are anticipating they're covering really well Cronin's having to work extra hard in there as well lock on McLaughlin but again it's a Clare man who emerges with it and it's Tony Kelly once again it's, oh wow how about that shades of uh, Patelini from back in the 70s this is one handed away by Conor O'Sullivan back out as far as a free Patrick Horgan nobody got near him he has a go he drives it beautifully over the bar a seventh for Pat Horgan his first to come from play and the gap tightens to two points in the first minute of added time and Clare must be wondering why they're not further ahead yeah but Ger, first of all what a fantastic score Conor O'Sullivan out in front of Conor McGrath played a lovely little one-handed ball up and Horgan from you know, it must have been nearly 100 yards on the angle straight over the bar but fair play to Cork they kept at it uh, I just think Clare need to play more ball into that full forward line a bit quicker they're carrying a little bit too much out the field and uh, you know the game is lightened up now there's a bit of life in the last five minutes and uh, both teams I think the nerves are going and they're settling down and the crowd is certainly becoming enlivened as well and they're enjoying it a little bit more that's uh, Conor O'Sullivan there winning the free for Cork which is going to be taken by Anthony Nash more or less the final 30 seconds of this first half huge one from Nash and that one has drifted wide of the target it's gone wide it's only Cork's first wide of this first half and I think the next thing we're probably going to hear in a few moments time will be the half-time whistle with only two points between the teams and uh, very very delicately balanced for this second half Park Kelly fucking up maybe there's time for one more clear attack they would probably feel they could do it another point just to stretch their lead before the break but they're not going to get it there went off patch Collins we haven't seen him do the kind of usual roaming that he tends to do in matches no but he is coming across the field here a lot he scored two good points um you know in the first half both of them nearly from the left half forward position he's tra he is traveling and covering ground but not playing the same role off out the middle of the field William Egan hits it in, Brian Gavin blows his whistle and the teams go off at half time here having uh, shared 22 points Hodge Collins racing across, it was a clear team that had four points of a lead at one stage Patrick Horgan's been Cork's top scorer with seven points the last one a wonderful point from play the team managements will have much to say at half time Colin Ryan has got five points, all from freeze for Clare. They had a really good goal chance with Dara Conan. Cork had a 20 metre free, which Anthony Nash took, but didn't quite convert. And at half time here in Croke Park in the 126th All Ireland hurling final, it's Clare who lead. Clare 12 points, Cork 10. We'll have analysis, lots of comment coming up right after this. One change made at half time by Cork, and that is Stephen Moylan has come into corner forward. And I think it's Jamie Collin who's made way. No change made by Clare, who are looking for their first win over Cork in the championship since 1998. Second half gets underway. And Clare looking to try and build upon what they achieved in the opening half. Egan back here towards Lockall McLaughlin, robbed straight away. And then back comes uh, Connor O'Sullivan to link up with his goalkeeper. And Nash drives it a good 60 metres down the field here. Well, Carney was trying to anticipate, didn't quite work out for him. But it comes to Connor Lee Hahn, who tried to up his performance from that first half. Inside towards Luke O'Farrell. Broken up here. Pat O'Connor couldn't get it, but uh, Tony Kelly can. Throws it ahead of himself almost. Lost it anyway, and then knocked it down towards Pats Collins. Clare fans felt he was fouled, referee didn't agree. In it goes as far as Colin Galvin, and Galvin places it across here on the left-hand side. Beautifully there for Tony Kelly, steadies himself and puts it over the bar. He knew from the minute he hit it 
He was jumping for joy with that one, punching the air, and he's got the first point of the second half, three between them. Yeah, that's great play by between two young players. Colin Galvin, you know, had a super first half in the middle of the field, lovely ball in, and Tony Kelly had been just out in the middle of the field uh, ten se two seconds before that. He covered 30 or 40 yards, great run into space and a great score. From that puck out, it's clear who've got it again, John Conlon. I'm sure Davy Fitzgerald has told them you won the first half, but you should be further ahead at this point. Podge Collins goes in, he's challenged, and the uh, referee sees the foul on the 21-year-old from Cratlow. He was caught there by Pa Cronin, and so it's going to be a free once again, which uh, Colin Ryan will take. Impeccable with his freeze in the opening 35 minutes. This to put four between them. Five from five so far, 50 metres from the target. Perfect day for hurling at Croke Park. And the pitch in perfect condition. And that's a, a very, very good start to the second half for him. He's certainly having a day of days, 14 points to 10. Yeah, and Jared, at half time, you know, over all the years I played, both managers, or the manager would be stressing, first 10 minutes in the second half, so important. And clear two points up, now gone four up and picked up where they started in the, in the first half, dominating again. Well, Cork have made one forward change. Let's see if it'll make any difference because it's the usual service. Connor Ryan once again dominating, blocked down this time, helped out by Bogler, slips it across inside towards Pat Donlan, and that went off Donlan, curses his luck, line ball to Cork. Clare anticipating that Cork might try and take it quickly, just as Clare had been doing earlier on. And uh, this line ball is eventually going to be hit in by uh, Cork's centre half back Chris Joyce second championship season for the Napierschig player so can he knock it into the square this time all the way in coming across to collective is Donal O'Donovan pursued there by Stephen Moylan and the Douglas man tries to hook him but doesn't quite get to it instead it's Daniel Carney trying to slip it back here to his clubmate at Sarsfield's Conor O'Sullivan back out towards McDonnell Stephen McDonnell looking once again for Carney but look at the way Clare are simply surrounding the Cork man on the ball pressure pressure the whole time it's almost waspish defending there by Clare you fend off one and then another one comes along to make life uneasy for you McDonnell here and uh, Carney getting themselves into a bother this time it comes back to O'Sullivan once again frees himself and then strikes it a long long distance down but again, there's strong play, and it's Conor Ryan. What a match he's playing. Terrific so far. Colm Galvin. Oh, took his eye off that one. Pat Horgan fumbled, and it enabled Pat Donlan to come forward once again and to strike, looking for another score, but this one has gone wide. Well, I think he got the uh, feel for scores in the semi-final when he got a great point against Limerick, playing in his 22nd championship match today. Yeah, Gerald, what a key factor you've, you've identified there, the tackling of the Clare forwards, they're putting so much pressure on Cork, forcing them into hit high balls out, and then they're dominating in the air in the half-back line, and really, at the, you know, the, the Cork team have not settled it out, here's Conor Lehan on the ball, and it's the first time he's really got any space. Hasn't scored so far, and Lehan gets away, O'Connor is after him, but Lehan has the chance, and he strikes a brilliant goal! It's his first ever championship goal, and it comes after 40 minutes! And now Cork will feel they're in with a renewed chance. They're within a point. It's Clare, 14 points. Cork one goal and 10. And Conor Lee Han, who's a real attacking threat, fires it into the corner. And now it could change the complexion of this All-Ireland final. Yeah, well, that's a great goal. You know, we know the ability he has. He never touched the ball. But Pat Patrick Kelly is going to be disappointed. You can see there, tried to get the hurl up and could get it across his body and into the back of the net and that's the ability that Conor Lahan has and that's really you know, going to spark the game into life and Clare won't believe how they're just a point up now at this stage but Cork now in the mix It's only Cork's uh, second championship goal of the season got one in the semi of course when Patrick Morgan got in against Dublin that all decisive late goal there one between them, line ball for Cork William Egan's going to take it Cuts it up well, broken down by Harnady, but uh, trying to take control of it, gives it away to Galvin instead, and Colin Galvin linking up here with Conor McGrath, point scorer in the first half, takes off to the left-hand side, pursued by Harnady again, once again it's McGrath, trying to get into a scoring opportunity, 
he ran and he ran and he ran with that one and finally got a free the foul was drawn from Conor O'Sullivan looked like he was almost going nowhere in the end right into a maze it seemed but then out came the hand catching him down he went and that indiscipline gives Clare a chance to stretch the lead out once again to two points yeah good change of direction there by Conor McGrath he carried the ball a long way and maybe a fortunate enough free I think Clare would be glad of it now just to settle things down again after the car call certainly stung by the concession of that and Colin Ryan's accuracy here is important he's got a seventh point all from freeze and so it's 15 points to 110 and Cork are about to make another change and that's Kean McCarthy coming on and the player who's going to make way is Lorcan McLaughlin so Kean McCarthy who hasn't seen any action in the championship since the monster final disappointed uh, Lorcan McLaughlin from this puck out it's down towards McCarthy going in there on the 40 try and unsettle Pat Donlan and gets a first possession here looking to try and lay it off he's drawn a foul from Bugler and that might be as good as a point for Cork because Clare protested and the ball is going to be brought forward 13 metres which is more or less onto the 45 metre line and very very much within Pat Horgan's range already beginning to assert himself there Kean McCarthy, wonderful in the air, very strong performer. And Horgan fires it up and puts it over. Yeah, Joe Kean McCarthy, I think a very forceful player. Sometimes the use of, use of possession doesn't be great, but he won that ball well. And interestingly, no, no, Pat Cronin has gone to the middle of the field. Uh, I thought Brendan Bugler was going to follow him, but he's gone in centre back now on Kean McCarthy with Pat, uh, Pat Donnell in the middle of the field. So they're mixing and matching Clare the whole time adapting to each challenge, each new situation that Cork present. And from that puck out, it's Clare who have to go back into their own half-back line, in particular Tony Kelly, to get on the ball here, surrounded by Clare, by Cork players. And now Cork are squeezing the space on Clare, such as Clare were doing earlier on here. Kean Dillon tries to get it out, Moylan tries to get possession, in there is Luke O'Farrell as well. And emerging with it once again is Conor Ryan, a star of this match so far, giving everything. It's only his third championship match when he made his debut against Galway in the quarter-final out as far as Podge Collins change of direction and then goes forward impishly carrying it this way and that like an egg and spoon race finally hitting it beautifully onto the netting and over the bar how about that? now that's the beautiful game Richard, that's an incredible score Podge Collins, they look covered by two men, turned back inside and off the hurl, and that's as good a score as you'll ever see in Cork Park. Fantastic ball, straight over the black spot. And he's made it 16 points to 111. What's the Cork response now? Early stages in the second half, nine minutes in. Bugler tries to get it away here. Kean McCarthy loses it, and Colin Galvin comes in, strong as ever. A kind of Charfitz Patrick type player in the middle of the field there for Clare, excelling, dominating able to link up defence with attack wonderful yeah. player he has a great engine they're fantastic for such a young player you know he's able, like his power and his strength is unbelievable his use of the ball top class he's able to take a score and really he's been fantastic all year and a great response for, by Terry you know Cork, Cork are hanging in there as Cork do they're not going away and you know we're going to have a very exciting last uh, 25 minutes or so so once again it's Colin Ryan seven points so far this from where they throw in the ball at the start of the halves and this one has drifted away the one that uh, didn't quite work out for him, so a two-point game still, as you were at half-time, but Cork greatly helped by the goal from Conor Lehan after 40 minutes, and that's probably what he was fearing and what he was hoping. This time it's broken down here, and the race for possession is won by Daniel Carney, and Carney knocks it over! Great play by the midfielder, a point in each half. Well, he's become a stronger, more durable player this year, and he's added a little bit of finishing power as well. Can be a real powerhouse performer in midfield. They need a big finish to this match from Daniel Carney. It's a one-point game, 16 points to 112. Yeah, great score, and probably the two midfielders of the year to me, Carney and Galvin, there, you know, really done. Both of them playing very well, and great battle between the two of them for the rest of the game. Egan snuffed out the danger there. Joyce with almost spooning it backwards there and playing Shane O'Neill into some difficulty. Here's Stephen McDonald. 
cleared under pressure. Back down beyond Pat O'Connor, the great first half. Bugler now here, strong, determined player, an all-star last year. Gets away from the goal scorer, Conor Lehan. Links up there with Conor McGrath. And what a little flick that was by Conor O'Sullivan, I think, to just get it away out of danger. Tremendous corner back play here by the 24-year-old. Just look at this again as McGrath advanced. In went the stick. Wonderful finesse. Colin Ryan into the path here of Podge Collins. Again takes off past McDonald who caught him. Free in. Porker got to be punished. The players start to run at them and draw the fouls now during the second half because in Colin Ryan they certainly have a free taker really in form. Yeah, and interesting, Jerry, that uh, Conor Sullivan was picking up Podge Collins in the first half, and Collins got a couple of scores, and Stephen McDonald has picked him up since half time. And, you know, Podge has scored three points from play. He's been fouled for another, you know, I haven't got the stats in front of me, but I'd say another two or three frees at least, and he's having a huge burn on this game. So McDonald gets a yellow card, and Colin Ryan tries to get another point. That's the uh, angle confronting him here. Will it come in? Not quite. Unlike Pythagoras, he hasn't quite got the angles right on this one. And it stays at 16 points to 112. Yeah, a one point game. Jeremy sure, saw this with Paul Ryan in the semi final. He missed three frees, and Anthony Nash scored a few. You know, you can't afford it at this level, and Colin Ryan normally so dependable, but that's true now he's missed. Well, he'll be hoping that that doesn't create uncertainty in his mind as Brendan Bugler once again. Lobs it forward here towards Dara Conan. I haven't seen him really get on the ball often enough. Had a goal chance, got a point. Now he's in the thick of it. The big tall man. Oh, that's good vision inside. Beautiful ball in as far as Colin Ryan. Blocked well. Conor O'Sullivan's off for a second time. Great defending by the number four of Cork, Conor O'Sullivan. Could have been a goal chance there for Clare. Might come yet. Pat Donlan now. Donlan 30 metres out. Plays it beautifully outside towards McGrath. There's work to do here, and he takes a point. Beautiful score by Conor McGrath. That's good, mature play by Clare. Great vision as well. Donlan was setting up. He was the architect of this, but the finisher was Conor McGrath. 17 points to 112. What about this? Yeah, for I just a block? Said, great block by Conor O'Sullivan. But really, Derek Conan could have tapped it over. It was good vision inside. And you see Hook there as well, and by, that was James Harnley, but at, in, at the end, a good, good score there by... Um, in the end, by it was McGrath. McGrath, yeah. A free to Clare, which is uh, going to be for Brendan Bugler being fouled there. We're 50 minutes into this match now, 20 to go, so it's up to these players now to show what they can do, to demonstrate their skills on the biggest day of all in the hurling calendar. There's a title here for Clara for Cork, and it's advantage Clara at this stage by just two points. That goal was a major score for Cork. It really has kept them in it in the second it half. It has, Jared. Clara half back then dominating the game, and you know, surprising the Cork having any options to bring anyone in there that can win some ball. This time it's lobbed in dangerously. Down went McGrath. Waiting for it here is Christopher Joyce, and under pressure, he gets it away, but it'll be a line ball to Clare. Incessant pressure now on the court backs being exerted. Tony Kelly's ready to take this. There's going to be another change. And the next man in will be number 23, Cahill Nocton. And the player going off is Stephen Moylan, who didn't really get an opportunity to shine in this. But the court selectors ready to make changes, not standing on ceremony. Well, in fact, it's... Uh, look, Kim McCarty Kim got McCarty hurt, I think, Sarah. Yeah, he was down injured there a few minutes ago. So this is John Conlon making a better angle for himself and a really good score by Conlon. When he's in form, he's worth seeing. His uh, season blighted with injury. A player who only lasted 19 minutes against Cork in the Munster Championship. He's lasting this one, and it's 18 points to 112. So just to clear that up, it's Cahill Nocton who has replaced Kean McCarthy. And uh, Stephen Moylan up there at quarter forward, but he hasn't really got a chance to get into the action. The service has been non-existent, really. They just can't get through that half-back line. It's impenetrable, and Hurley's go flying, and the referee saw a chop there, and it's going to be a free to Clare. 
Yeah. They are dominating this match. They are, Jared. They've taken over again. You know, Cork got the goal and you think they were going to come back into it, but Clare just took over again and they're playing fantastic hurl in the second half. You know, if you look at the forward line, John Connell and Tony Kelly scored two points and three points respectively. The full forward line have scored six points from play. And all that Cork have got is a point from Seamus Harvey, a goal from Connell Lahan, and one point from play from Patrick Horgan. You know, that's a goal in two points in 50 minutes in, in an All Ireland final, and that's not going to be good enough. They really have to pick up the pace up front. Well, they're ahead by three, Claire. He's missed the last two frees. This is another very ambitious one. It's a huge distance out, but he loves it beautifully and carefully over that crossbar. And he's back on song again. Eight points for Colin Ryan. It's a massive contribution. He was calm, and this time he showed his consistency and his care. 19 points to 112. Yeah, and great character, Jar after missing the previous two, and that's a long-range one, a very important score again. This is beautifully caught by Seamus Harnady. First one, I think he's caught, and he puts it over the bar. Great plucky play here by Seamus Harnady, the 22-year-old, getting his second point. Well, his mother, Cathy, was an All-Ireland winning camogie captain 30 years ago here at Grog Park. And here he caught this one brilliantly, took off, had only a point on his mind, and made it. Fantastic score, Ger, and uh, he did that against Kilkenny in the first 20 minutes on Kieran Joyce, who had a fantastic year for Kilkenny, but Harnady is good in the air, and you know, good to see someone competing in that half order. That's the first clean catch I think they've got there. We're into the last quarter of this match. That's batted back out here, but collected once again. And this time Colin Ryan looks, waits, and sees the white flag. He's got a ninth. He's capable of amassing huge tallies. I remember one night down in Porky Ring when they made in the league in March. I think he got 12 that night. He's capable of a fantastic score in this final. He is, Jared. That's all six forwards now have scored from play. Uh, the half forward line have scored six points from play, and the full forward line have scored six points from play. As I say, against one three and the other end, so they've, they've scored uh, double the amount that Cork have so far from play. By comparison, Cork have only had three forwards who've scored from play in this match. And that tells its own story. But then the dominance, the matchups that Sherlock Nan was talking about at one stage during halftime, they've all been terribly, terribly important. And so far, Davy Fitzgerald has got it absolutely right. Claire Cork still have a chance. They still have time. But they've got to get motoring. Patrick Horgan now, eight points from freeze so far. Four points the margin. And he's put this one to the right. And it's just not working out for Cork. Well, they're, living, they're living off scraps, Jerem. You know, when you are living off scraps, you have to take every chance, and that's a that's a big miss now from Pat Horgan. I would have brought it back to three, and four points gives Claire a bit of a cushion. Well, what can he do? One of the great heroes of Cork Sport, Jimmy Barry Murphy. He's done really, really well to get his team to this All Ireland final. Now, can they win it? Claire come again. They look like they hold the aces. They've got four points of an advantage. Conor McGrath darting forward, stopped by Conor O'Sullivan, who's been under enormous pressure down on this side. This time he reached out, caught his man. He's going to get a yellow card for that, I think. Yeah, but it's very obvious part of the tactics of Clare. When they get possession, unless the shot is on, they take on their man every time. And they're fantastic at it. You know, the change in direction and the head for the goals, and it's caused an awful lot of frees here. You can see Colin Ryan, you know, he scored eight, he's missed a couple. So they are forcing the fouls in the Cork defenders. It tells its own story, Michael, as well, that everybody in the Cork full back line, McDonald, O'Neill and O'Sullivan, all on yellow cards. And, of course, they could have lost Shane O'Neill in the first half, but he got a yellow card and got lucky. Colin Ryan hitting this, splits the post, it's ten points for him. He's having a magnificent day out, as are Clare at Croke Park. And the young fans, and the not-so-young, he sees himself up there, hoping that this will be the day he'll remember when Clare won their fourth ever title. Anthony Nash bucking it out, what's the Cork response? Cahill knocked him. Something of a forgotten man in Cork hurling, sparingly used. Back to William Egan, lobbing it in here towards Moylan, trying to break it down. It comes down towards Luca Farrell, and he is fairly well flattened, free in from 20 metres out. And they'll yeah. bring up the goalkeeper. They need a goal chance. They need to have their chances here rescued by a goal from Nash. As he was running down that time, as sometimes happened with goalkeepers nowadays, he was, shall we say, impeded. But he's got to make it. He'll make it down in one piece. Uh, again, crucial. Jerry, just in the first half one, you, you see John Connor now having a word with him. Connor Lehan drew out the boot there as well. 
This is the latest fashion, of course, as goalkeepers come down and it gets as tense That's, as this. I'm actually surprised there's not more of it, including in the football. There is a certain amount of it. There is a certain amount, but this is getting a little bit messy now. Yeah, far too tense. People getting far too excited. And Brian Gavin looks like the calmest man around. Second All-Ireland final for him, of course. He was here two years ago, the 2011 final. Got a belt in the nose that day. Now, Anthony Nash about to take this. And I wonder will the referee be looking at the goalkeeper's position? Yeah, the I was going to say that, Joe. Patrick Kelly came out an awful long way in the first one, and Anthony Nash threw it in really to the 14 yard line, which is entitled to do this. time the referee's going to have a word, John. And it's worth looking as well that the D isn't encroached. So Nash, 57 minutes into the game, Cork need a goal. He's got it! Second ever championship goal for Anthony Nash. And now it's a two point game. 2 13 for Cork. Clare still leading with their 21 points. That's what they call a rocketer. Absolutely buried it. The first one he threw the way a little bit too hard. But look at that into the roof of the net. A fantastic score. There's still a bit of stuff going on off the ball here now. There certainly is. Uh, doing their impression of puck goats. But uh, the referee has flashed a yellow card to Cahill Nocton. Well, the King Puck Festival is over for one year and uh, he's probably just happy to be in there. And An amazing game, Gerard. An amazing game. Cork have just clung on and clung on and clung on and they're back to two points again. And Clare, you know, seem to be doing all the hurling and Cork are still in this game. Missed by Brian Murphy, recovered by Daniel Carney, slipped back as far as Conor O'Sullivan. Caught this time by Galvin, but manages... Well, I thought he was caught by the hand that time, but uh, the linesman on the far side anyway signals that it's going to be a line ball. So Clare's possession, chance to put further pressure now on that somewhat beleaguered Cork defence. That was some strike. There's Go a short again. Ball again. This time anticipated by Cork, but then Potts Collins is able to get away. He's elusive. Well, who by Stephen McDonnell playing well. And the referee blows his whistle and gives a free out to Cork at the end of all of that. 12 minutes are remaining in the. 2013 final, it's a two-point game, Clare ahead. And I wouldn't be surprised with Anthony National, he could get the distance, I know it's an awful long way out from his own 45, but he has a massive strike of the ball. He got two points against Clare from distance in the Munster semi-final, he's going to drop short, two against two in there, broken down, and in comes Hornady, and Hornady goes down and it's a penalty! Knew exactly what he had to do, caught it, that loose ball, drove at the defenders, and now the referee is calling across one of the backs. It's got to be Key and Dillon. And Dillon is the one who gets the yellow card for this, even though it looked like it was McDonald from the replay who caught him. But that's the man who got the card. So the goalkeeper's up again, Anthony Nash. He's already the uh, top-scoring goalkeeper in an All-Ireland hurling final. Prior to that, in living memory, the only man who had done it was uh, Brendan Cummins two years ago against Kilkenny. So while David Fitzgerald and Louis McQueen mull over this, Anthony Nash gets about his business, looking for a second goal, and it's stopped! And they've saved it! And Paul Kelly has done brilliantly well and gets the congratulations of Pat O'Connor and the rest of the backs. And Clare remain in front by two points with just over ten minutes to go. He came out, got the stick to it, was a little uncertain as to where it was going to go to after that. Well, in fact, it was on the line. It was saved on the line. Not sure Kelly actually got the first touch at all, but it was stopped there. I think it might be Donald O'Donovan. Missed by Cork, rescued by Clare. Great save on the line up and hit the crossbar. And you know, <laughs> all of a sudden, this game has really sparked into life. Uh, that is an absolutely brilliant save. It's anybody's match. Colin McGrath now feeling they should be out of sight at this stage, but you rarely see that in an All Ireland hurling final. Dara Coleman challenging. William Egan put under pressure. Back goes Potts Collins to try and get it. Hand in the back, down he went. Free in. Chance to stretch the lead to three points in a thrilling second half here at Croke Park. And once again, it will be Colin Ryan who will take it. And Clare are just about to make their first substitution. We'll be seeing that in a moment. 
and they will be bringing on Cahill McInerney, there he is, number 23. Before all of that, Colin Ryan's ready to put this over the bar, an easy enough one for him. No difficulty, 11 points, his wonderful tally in this final. And so it's now 22 points to 213, or 22 points to 90. So on comes Cahill McInerney, and off goes Dara Coleman. Scored a point early on, got a goal chance which was well stopped by Anthony Nash. Apart from that, he will be uh, a little unhappy, but his side are still leading. That's a brilliant piece of catching there by Conor Ryan. He's had a superb match. Can he finish it off with a point here? What about that wonderful score? Oh, it's his first ever in the championship. Well, he has developed brilliantly, and the UL student only given his debut at the quarter-final stage. Look at that for fetching. Caught it superbly and then drove it from 45 metres out, maybe even more. Well, that's an incredible score, definitely the best score of the match, and he's had a fantastic game at centre-back, wing-back, wherever he's been needed. He's been brilliant. We've seen some wonderful points. Colm Galvin here now, very near the sideline, denied space. Once again picked up here by Conor Lehan. They need a score from Lehan. Can he supply it? He can. A goal and a point now for Conor Lehan. Both of them coming in the second half. And Cork keep on chipping away. They're three points behind. There are eight minutes remaining. And this was Lehan's second score of the day. Yeah, he's very dangerous in possession, but the problem has been getting possession. And you know, we've, we've kept saying it, but there's still 20 points on the board, we're within three points, and uh, it's anybody's game yet. Park Kelly. An important one to win here now. And it's Clare who win it. And it's Conor McGrath feeding it outside there to the new man, Cahill McInerney. And he got two goals and a point against Wexford. This time he drops short, comes up the post. That was missed by Potts Collins. McDonald got it away, out as far as Daniel Carney, and Cork got away with it. A clear goal there, you would feel, coming at this stage would have finished the match, but instead it is Moylan, Stephen Moylan, his first chance, back in here, as far as Park Cronin, a goal! Park Cronin, only chance he's had so far in this game, and the teams are level, but 64 minutes gone. It's an amazing second half. It looked like Clare, but Cork have a never-say-die approach. They got lucky there. Missed by Patch Collins, should have been a goal at one end. He curses his luck, but what happened at the other end? Down went Cork, and Cronin scored. Well, Joe really, when the ball hit the post, Patch Collins followed in brilliantly, but he missed the ball, he was cleared, and that's a brilliant finish by Pat Cronin. He was so cool. He looked, used all his experience, looked for the space, took his few steps, and then buried it up in the roof of the net. A brilliant goal by Pat Cronin. And amazingly, a drama match now with six minutes to go. Fergal Lynch has come on for Clare in place of John Conlon. And other changes they want to make down on the sideline, but the referee says play away. They level. Beautiful ball back here, taken up by Tony Kelly. An amazing match at Croke Park once again. It was thrilling last Sunday in the football, thrilling here as well in the hurling decider. And it's got to be a free in and another chance for Colin Ryan to write his name all over this particular final. Davy Fitzgerald trying to remain calm, I'm sure that's very difficult right now, with only six, five and a half minutes really to go. Colin Ryan to get point number 12, maybe. Yeah, and Tom Kenny in as well, I see. But you know, Clare 23 points, and Cork just chipping away, and three goals, they've had a 21-yard free save, the penalty saved as well. Colin Ryan looking for his 12th, he's got it, it's Clare once again, ahead by a point in an amazing match, and now five minutes to go, and this was Moylan, his dad was a star in the past for Cork, Park Cronin, the captain, is a star here, and he gave Cork renewed hope and life, it went past everybody, through the fingers of Bogler, now Cork come back, and it's Conor Lehan, big one in here towards Moylan again, now he's winning possession, now he's showing what he can do, helped out here by Cahal Nocton, but the referee had blown his whistle, Nocton had hit it into the side netting anyway, it's going to be a free in, and it's a chance to tie up the match, we've got four minutes to go, and a little over maybe, because of the uh, injury time, 
Yeah, and Joe, you have to say Cork are thinking goals now all the time. You know, they're getting great confidence in there. They've caused an awful lot of trouble inside there when they've got possession. Uh, scored the three goals, they say could have maybe had another couple and uh, they should level it up again now. He's got eight so far and Patrick Horgan, the Glen Rovers star, makes absolutely sure of it. Nine points, level for the third time. One on to replay, we said it last year, it happened. Four minutes to go now. And Paul making uh, another change. And Cork's number 20 is Stephen White. And he's come on for Daniel Carney. That's their fifth and final sub. So they've tried their full hand. Clare have put on two of their possible subs. I think they've now got a, a third one on as well. This is Conor McGrath looking up. Sensing a winning point, maybe, but uh, it's gone well away to the right-hand side, and it's a, a missed opportunity. 24 points apiece, 24 points to 3.15. Nicky O'Connell is one of those to join the fray in the last few minutes. Anthony Nash pocking it out. The crowd just getting behind both teams, raising the volume. And once again, it is Clare who looked magnificent at that half-back line. Bugler there, superb. Ryan has been superb all through the match. That's Connor Ryan. What about this? As he got in there against Seamus Harnady and came out with possession. Wasn't going to be denied. Young man who I believe is now teaching in Kilkenny. And they'll have lots to talk about over the winter, I'm sure, in that hurling mad county. And uh, he looks like he's in trouble with that injury. And Davy Fitzgerald just making sure that every possible gap in the system is filled immediately. Yeah, this it looks like a dead leg. And they're just amazed with Cork maybe persevering with the long puck out. You know, Don Lowe, Cusack will be on tonight and he'll have a view in it. I'm sure he's, he's in the studio watching the match or he's here. But you know, they never went short with any and they kept putting it down that half back and who dominated possession. And it's really amazing that Cork are still in this game with the amount of ball that they have won in their half back line. But they have kept plugging away. They've shown great heart, great determination. And now two minutes to go. Can go either way. Will he go try it? Will he go for a point this round? Uh, well, he's, he's gone back to take it, so he must feel he has the distance. The last one he lobbed in, but this no, time short. Yeah, he's going to drop it short. It's time for somebody to stand up and become the hero. Tony Kelly might be that player, and now he's put it wide. And we're inside the last two minutes of the 70. Clare will feel that on balance they have been much the better team and should win this final. But sheer dogged determination by Cork and. Uh, some plenty of quality as well within their ranks has kept them going and those three goals have been so important the next man who will be coming in very shortly will be Shea Amori so possession now vital here Nicky O'Connell managed to get it away Clare's second half sub putting the pressure there on Stephen McDonald who drops it down and it's taken by Shane O'Neill nobody wants to give away the ball loosely here this time it's important just to retain the possession that time it was Stephen White who held on Line ball for Clare, however, and the pressure back on. 69 minutes gone in the final. Clare 24 points, Cork 315. So who's going to win it now? Well, you, you're usually pretty good at reading the tea leaves. Well, How do you see it? <laughs> well, I, I think Stephen White was very unlucky not to get a free there. He won possession, he was shoved in the back, he didn't get it. Uh, I think Brian Gavin very happy to blow it up if it gets to 70 minutes for a draw match. This should be cut out. Chris Joyce coming across here. McInerney's after him, McGrath's after him, and finally they catch up with him. Again, they dig in here, just trying to get that vital possession. Close to the end of the 70 minutes. Back out it comes, look where Conor McGrath has gone back to about left corner back. Up here towards Podge Collins. If there's to be another score here now, it'll probably be the winning of the All-Ireland Final. Podge Collins hops it on the ground, gets it back again, loses it to Cahill Nocton. Nocton goes way back, tries to fend off Tony Kelly and sends it out over the sideline off the Clare stick. It's got to be a line ball and there are going to be two minutes of added time now. And we're into that, as you can see already, with the match tied, tantalisingly so. Yeah, well, I tell Jerry, Clare hang on for draw or win it, Conor McGrath. He made some ground, he travelled back 70 yards there and Todd Christopher Joyce took the ball off him and he saw Cotton Nocton doing the very same thing there on Podge Collins. Some great effort into the 70th minute in all Ireland final, great tackling. Oh, it's uh, wonderful stuff, absolutely magnificent stuff by both these teams. Chris Joyce cut in, 
onto it here comes Horgan can he be the match winner will this be the winner of the All-Ireland it's over the bar Patrick Horgan gets a tenth one minute of stoppage time still to go and Cork go in front here by 316 to 24 points it would be very cruel on Clare but then this is a day for winners who's going to do it advantage Cork back out it comes again to Cahill Nocton Cahill Nocton taking off we know he's got pace Pat Donnellan is after him and flicks it away there's a support player there waiting for it and that ball is hit in there by Stephen Moylan and finally won back by Park Kelly 30 seconds are thereabouts to go he's been hounded across over there by Luca Farrell out over the far sideline line ball coming up a line ball to Cork and the Cork fans all around Croke Park are on their feet at this stage what a winner that would be by Pat Horgan one of the stars of the day on a day when Clare have certainly been the better team but Jimmy Barry's Murphy's side look like they're about to snatch the victory Stephen Moylan ready to hit this he needs it to go dead the game is over hits it in and hits it wide almost there Jimmy Barry Murphy looks like he's done it it looks like he's brought a Cork team from nowhere to win the championship a few seconds remaining Clare won one more chance that's Pat O'Connor inside it comes here Nicky O'Connell now trying to fend off challenges back out it comes once again to Donald O'Donovan they would deserve a draw they get a draw Donald O'Donovan puts it over the bar and Davy Fitzgerald and Clare, I think, will be back here. The referee has allowed the quick puck out to be taken. It's still in play no longer. It's all over. And it's ended in a magnificent draw at Croke Park. For the second year in a row, the teams in the final have to come back and do it all again. We won't complain. Jimmy Barry Murphy must have felt he had the game won 60 seconds ago. Davy Fitzgerald must have feared the worst. But how about that? Well, Ger Heroes everywhere. I have to say, there's a little bit of boon from the Cork club because it was maybe 30 seconds in over the two minutes, but that's at the referee's discretion. But what a score to draw on a learning final from a corner back. What was he doing up there? Who's never scored before. He's never scored before in the championship. He had an outstanding game at corner back for a lot of the game. How he was up in that position, I'll never know. But that was a brilliant score off his left-hand side. And you'd have to say on the balance of play that Clare would deserve a draw in this game. A fantastic second half. The first half was a little bit you know, nervous and players were, I don't know, the whole occasion, as we thought, might get there. But the second half, we had absolutely everything. A phenomenal second half. We had goals, we had fantastic scores. Like, what did Clare end up with? 25, 25 points in the All-Ireland final and not to win the 25 scores from play. But Cork stuck at it, they didn't give in. And we all, we'll be back here, I don't know, towards the end of September for a second edition. I can't wait. It's amazing, isn't it? You, I mean, the last draw was last year, and before that it was 1959. It's like the buses, <laughs> two come along at once. Yeah, well, Liam Sheedy said to me, we were coming over in a taxi this morning, he said 14-1 to 1 with Paddy Powers for the draw. So, look, at uh, that was maybe the bet to have a, a little few quid on that. A great, a great, great game, and well done to both sides. And this is how it's finished. The full-time score, Clare, 25 points. Cork, three goals and 16. Let's go down to Clare. Jimmy, can you quite believe that finish? Did you think you had won us? Yeah, I thought we might have nicked it in the end. I probably wouldn't have deserved maybe on the day Clare Road Sandy, I thought. And we struggled a lot to the game, but uh, the lads showed great spirit, fantastic carry to come back, and uh, draws a fair result, I think. It was a game you were chasing right from the off. Yeah, we didn't play well today in the first half in particular. I thought Clare were very, very good, and uh, they always had a step or two ahead of us. But um, our lads showed great character as well, and uh, as Zellery, I think it draws a fair result. And of course, three goals keeping you there. Yeah, we needed the goals badly, and um, it, you know, we haven't got many goals all year, but certainly we needed them today. It's often an anti-climax when there's a draw. How are you feeling now? Well, it's an anti-climax for everybody, but that's the way it goes. We're looking to be everything to fight again next day. You think it's a fair result? I think it was a very fair result. Okay, thanks, Jimmy. Thanks,